Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, first, I very much welcome licensing of Airbnbs. In my neck of the woods, there are many, no doubt, some excellent. But one in particular drove me to distraction, as every summer midweek night, like clockwork, as night fell, the temporary inhabitants would set up their drinks table, barbecue, and later a gazebo in their garden. I had prayed for rain to drive them indoors, not a gazebo. As the night and drinking progressed, so did the noise levels. Finally, one very late night, indeed early morning, had enough, opened the bedroom window and proclaimed that I was a neurosurgeon, needing my sleep, and they should all go to bed. Silence fell, then there were whispers, and peace reigned. The gazebo abandoned. So better legislation than neighbours having to resort to such subterfuge. I would add that this is not only an urban problem, having had issues with a so-called party house in West Linton re referenced earlier. I also broadly support and appreciate the health and safety requirements. However, I was surprised at the reach of the legislation and have some case studies which illustrate some issues constituents have raised. I put these in the record, and it may be that in summing up, some of these can be addressed by the Minister. Now, I do appreciate that Midlothian and Scottish Borders Council have issued policy guidance, introducing some limited flexibility, such as temporary exemptions, for example, to accommodate a large influx of visitors over a short period to support specific events such as local festivals and sports events such as the Melrose Sevens. These do require to go before fire and rescue and police, but there is also the opportunity for temporary licences, for example, when the property concerned is subject to sale. These have been referred to as light touch. But to constituents' concerns, these are in quotes and abridged, and their constituents' words, not mine, but I, I think it's part of my job to bring them to the chamber. Quotes. I thought I'd get in touch with you to explain why the short-term li li licensing is terrible and in desperate need of adjusting to allow flexibility. I'm going through a very expensive divorce and desperately trying to sell both my family home and my one-bed flat in Edinburgh. My flat lies empty because I cannot rent it out as a holiday let, which I've done without complaint for 15 years. Um, would I do this when it's on the market? Would I apply for a licence? Now, I've already referred to the fact you can get temporary positions uh, from Borders Council and Midlothian. I don't know if that's the case in Edinburgh. Close quotes. Case two. I've operated our family flat in Cosby side of a, as a short-term let since 2006, once our children no longer needed accommodation for the university years. There are some party flats in Edinburgh which should be easy to identify because of the number of guests and number of rooms could this be a straightforward solution? I've applied for a certificate of lawfulness and I'm in the process of applying for a license to enable me to continue with my work. This has all taken many hours and is likely to cost me my entire profit for this year. I just have to hope it's worth it. Close quotes. Case study three. Quotes. I'm writing to you as a host of self-catering cabins based in Peebles and in hope that this will assist in the calls to the Scottish Government to pause the implementation of the short-term le legislation deadline, the application process is cumbersome, bureaucratic, expensive, and unnecessary with time quickly running out as the 1st October deadline approaches. Close quotes. Number four. Quotes, we have a purpose-built one-bed conversion, specifically designed for short-term lets and not suitable for long-term occupancy because of lack of storage. We mark it through country cottages, which insist on all the safety checks in the current legislation without the additional costs and hoops in the new registration. And finally, number four, home swapping. Quotes, we have been members of HomeLink for approximately four years, during which we have undertaken 10 home exchanges. This involves staying in each other's home in order to have a holiday, usually on a simultaneous basis, occasionally non-simultaneous. The exchanges are undertaken on a trust basis between partners. No money changes hands, nor is there any payment in kind made. These are not commercial arrangements, but part of the circular or sharing economy. On average, we'll probably do three exchanges a year. Some people do two exchanges. We must emphasize these exchanges happen in our private home without charge. Our home complies with all the safety standards required by legislation and as it, where we permanently live, we maintain it to a high standard, close quotes. And these are for constituents. I put them out there for consideration. Now, I share the, con I'm just concluding, sorry. I, I share the concerns of Willie Rennie. I don't know if he's happy I share his concerns. But there is insufficient flexibility in the regulations 
which tightly define which properties fall within the remit. I think we're all agreed we need regulations, but they actually, if you go through the list defined in the regulations, there's no flexibility to councils. They're very tight, and I don't think they're always suitable to local communities. And I know councils have their areas, whatever their political hue, at heart. So I therefore trust that the Scottish Government will, as this regulatory framework is applied, if necessary, if what we are saying, some of us, comes to pass, undertake a review and allow councils more flexibility in which properties are affected. Please don't heckle me. I'm trying to be non-political and reasonable, which is unusual for you, Mr Ross. Thank you very much.